Hello everybody, it's Voidbrand here, and we are going to do another Let's Play series of one of Piranha Bytes games, Cocker 3. This game needs no introduction, but I'll introduce it anyways. This game released in 2006 and is a sequel to, well, Gothic 2. This is the third game in the series and the final game in the series. And I know there's Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods and Gothic Arcania, but I'm not really counting those because those aren't Piranha Bytes games. And from what I heard, they're not very good, and I don't think I have much interest in them anyways, but... I said I was not going to play this game right after Gothic 2, but I feel up to it, considering that the studio may be shut down soon. Possibly. And it's also the final game in the series, so let's do a playthrough of this game and put the series behind us. But first, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about some boring stuff, my experiences with this game, the stuff, the patches I have installed and all that. So if you're not interested, just I'll have a timestamp in this video that will say game start or something like that. But regardless, Gothic 2 is my first Gothic game. It was my first Prana Bytes game at around, oh, I don't know. I don't know if it was 04, 05 or something like that. I played that game first, then I played Gothic 1. So I was pretty excited for Gothic 3 to come out. I bought it on day one. I remember ordering it and it came in the mail. I installed it and a lot of fans find this game rather disappointing. It's the most, this is where Piranha Bytes, amongst internet discussions, amongst Piranha Bytes fans, that this game um, was a real letdown. It's got many issues when the game came out. It was very, it was a stuttered filled mess. It was very, very stuttery. It had a lot of bugs and overall, feels like a big step back compared to the first two games when it comes to the combat, the animations, and the character progression. And I played the game when it came out, and I don't think I was too disappointed in it. I wasn't as critical of games than I am nowadays, like I was back then. But I did play through it once, and I never came back to it again, which would probably say a lot, because this game is very, very big. It's very, very long. If you plan on doing all the quests, exploring every nook and cranny, I think you're looking at over 100 hours, and I don't believe I'm going to do that. But first, getting this game to run on modern computers is actually pretty, pretty simple. You basically need the community patch. I have three patches installed. Without any of those, the game is not very fun. We've got the community patch installed, 1.75.14. That was released back in 2012, I believe. We have the update pack installed, 1.04. And we got the parallel universe patch installed, 1.0.5. So the community patch basically fixes, well, patches all the bugs that were left behind from their last, from Piranha Byte's last official version. The update pack takes care of even more bugs. That was released in 2015. And the parallel universe patch makes the game less stuttery decreases loading times, and overall, just makes it a more, well, smoother experience. Before we continue though, the community patch introduces two things. Alternative balancing, which I have off currently, and it also introduces... not that. Alternative AI, which I'm going to turn off. Um, I played this game for about an hour a few days ago. I'm recording this as of Friday, March 29. So what Alternative Balancing does, aside from the community patch fixing a numerous amount of bugs, is that in the original version, and this may be a bit of a spoiler in regards to character progression, but in the original version, you can become super, super powerful. You can pretty much learn almost every single skill in the game. So Alternative Balancing forces you to specialize, which sounds pretty cool, but I'm gonna leave it off because that's what I'm gonna do. An Alternative AI, well, in the original, only one enemy attacks you at any given time. With alternative AI on, on medium, two can attack you. On hard, three can attack you at one time during group fights. Easy, just one. It also changes their, well, AI. So you can't just click left click over and over and over and over again to beat every single enemy in the game. But I had both these off because I find that it makes the game, well, makes the game last longer and I want this game to be like how they made it back then with just bug fixes. So yeah, 
But anyways, without further ado, it's been five minutes so far of me gathering. I think I talked about everything I wanted to talk about, so... Let's get started. Hopefully this will be a fun experience, and I can look at it with a fresh perspective in my older age. Do you really want to start with a new game without alternative balancing? Yes. We're going to click out of this because we're in combat right away. So how about you? And that's one down. Let's help out Gorn. So you can see the combat is much more different than in Gothic 1 and 2, which is bit of a step back, I suppose, but let's just concentrate on fighting these orcs first. There's a fair bit. When I played this game with alternative AI, these orcs were much more tougher. I fell down in battle a few times, and I thought it was just me sucking really bad. It's like, I might have health right now, you know? Let's take out the boss first, because, you know, if you're in a real-life situation, you may want to kill the boss first and send the rest of the ranks into disarray. 
And we're kind of low on health as it is. So let's go ahead and heal up. Low potion. Yeah, I fell down like three, four times. I lost health down to zero. When I test this out, this game... Alternative AI is a fair bit difficult. But I'll come up with that later because... It was so difficult that all the slaves in this town died. Oh boy. Okay. There's three of them. So you see that only one attacks you at one time. With alternative AI, it was like two. This one's attacking us, though. And we're gonna take care of him. Take this. Ah, that's you. With alternative AI, if you hit too much like that, if you spam left attack, they just start blocking. And the original, they don't do that. From what I remember. Okay, that's however many down. Ah, shoot. I'm actually might die in a minute. So we're not dead. We'll wake up in a minute, because you can't die during this section. But if we could die, we would nearly die, because I'm not very good at this game. Or at games in general. Now let's continue. I swear to god I'm hitting the right mouse button for block, but I think as soon as they start hitting you, then it's not going to work. Yeesh. Just take this. My goodness, another one. There's two of them, shoot. Not a good idea for Piranha Bites to throw us into battle right away. It's actually, this is one of the most common criticism, criticisms of the game. Which I do agree with. At least they give you a tutorial box to, uh... You know, read, but it's just weird to read tutorials while there's action going on around you. Like, it would be better if... You came to town and you just talked to everyone, including the orcs, you know? And you could liberate it later or something, because you liberate towns in this game. There's a war going on in Montana, and the orcs are winning. You saw the capital being um, protected by that magical barrier that was similar to the first game in the colony. Is it over yet? There we go, finally. The orcs have been defeated. You can now put your weapon away by pressing the space bar. Now go to your friends and talk to each one of them. Approach them until their name is displayed, and then click the left mouse button. Talk to Diego, Gorn, and Milton. Okay, let's put it away. What have you done? The orcs would have let us live. Now Zardus will send even more of them after us. You need to go to Reddick. His eyes. All right, what's in Reddick? What's in Reddick? The rebel camp. It's in the middle of the forest, where the wolves are. I can handle wolves. Yes, but those beasts are awfully aggressive, and you won't be able to find it by yourself. I think your buddy Gorn knows where it is. You should go talk to him. How do you know Gorn? We just arrived. What should I tell the rebels? Tell their leaders to send us fighters. We don't stand a chance by ourselves. Now we're also in it up to our necks. No kidding, all the slaves are probably dead. What has Zardis got to do with the orcs? What's wrong with you? Haven't you been here these last few weeks? Zardas is the leader of the Orcs. He betrayed us. What else do you know about Zardas? He destroyed the rune magic, that filthy swine. Deprived of their magic, paladins and fire mages never stood a chance against the hordes of Orcs. They weren't doing too well in the previous games, but either way, finally the game is starting. And as you can see, the nameless hero does not have his trademark ponytail. I guess he just cut it off while on the ship. And I forgot to mention that there's actually two other patches you can install with this game before I continue with Let's Play. One of them is the quest pack, adds more quests. And another is a content mod pack, mod something. And that one, I believe, adds new head models and you can get the trademark ponytail and head of this main character in Gothic 3. So I decided not to do that because I just want to play this game, you know, as it came out, I want to play the game they made. 
which again is a bit disappointing to a lot of fans, but to me, we'll, well, we'll see what I think about it after I play it, but I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll be okay with this game, even though it's probably going to be my least favorite gothic game. Let's save right here. We can't name it. We'll make another save too, just because, oh, nope, right here. So I like having two saves, and we're going to make several saves as we play, because if you watch my playthroughs, you know I'm kind of a compulsive saver. I like saving in many different slots and all that. I usually don't do that, but when it comes to Let's Plays and streams, just in case I lose my recording to like a crash or something, or something gets corrupted, I can go back and redo the playthrough. So let's loot. So this guy's got, this orc's got booze and 79 gold coins, which says can't beat a well full gold bag oh okay so you can click take all or close it or you can press the hot key which i have set to e that wasn't in the original game that's a mod in the original game you have to click on the box like this if you want all the healing roots every single time you looted uh loot an enemy now there's something here there's a teleporter stone we're gonna take that i suppose we're allowed to take the uh gold i don't think he minds he does not mind we'll take it We'll take the healing potion. We'll also take these two healing potions. I suppose these belong to the orcs, but they're all dead now, so it belongs to us. We'll take the goblet as well. Get some money. So let's explore Reddick a little bit. I'm going to take the time to enter each house and just take things. And also, before this game came out, I played the demo. They had a demo out, and they basically locked off this part of the map, if I can find it. Tip. All smithing blueprints, recipes, alchemical formulas, letters, and maps are stored here. To use blueprints, you must find an anvil. For recipes, you need a campfire or cooking stove. An alchemist bench is needed for alchemical formulas. Letters and maps can be read by moving the mouse pointer over the corresponding icon. Some letters can even start missions. For this, left click on the letter icon. We don't have a map yet. I know where to get it though. Let's run over here. And the boss orc is right here, boss Prakkaz. And he's got a healing potion, endurance potion. This game has stamina now, we have a stamina bar. We can sprint in this game, finally, without using a potion like in the previous games. Monoplant and a world map. We're gonna take all these. We're also gonna loot these guys real quick. I like to grab weapons off the ground and uh, sell them because I don't like stuff littering the game world. Got some crossbow bolts, corals. Got some in here, too, behind these sacks of whatevers. Probably grain. With this warrior orc. These orcs are different in this game versus the previous game. I think they retconned it in a way to explain that there's different breeds of orcs. So the orcs in Gothic 1 and 2 are more tribalistic and animalistic and overall just very, very bestial and deadly. These orcs can... Well, you can converse with them. They have their own... I guess they have a better society than the previous orcs in the previous two games. Though there was Urshak in Gothic 1. Remember him? Ulumulu. I'll never forget him. Crush Pack. We'll take that. We'll take all this. We'll talk to our friends in a minute. Got a dead slave here. He's got water. We'll take that. Make sure to loot everything. Don't want to talk to Gorn. I want to loot this body real quick. And let's go over here. I don't know if there's a quick save, uh button anywhere. There is. Did I save in a different slot? Oh, no. It just saves in a complete new slot altogether. I don't like quick saving, so we're just gonna do that, I guess. I don't know. I don't think it matters. What's the hotkey for quick loading? Did I set it? Um... F9. Okay. Let's go in here. This is the smithy. There's an anvil... Remember in Gothic 2, you can craft weapons. Well, you can do that in this game too. There's a smith's hammer, we're gonna take it. And we're gonna walk into this house. There's no doors in this game, just like Gothic 1 and 2, which is a little less immersive, but not a big deal. We'll take this raw steel. We got shields, we don't need those. This game has halberds and spears now. I don't think spears, just halberds. We'll take this uh, casket. We've got a bow there, regular swords and axe. We'll leave those alone. What's in this chest? We got three fire arrows, a ladle, and a blueprint for a broad sword. We'll take broad sword. We'll take that. That's we'll uh, leave the ladle alone. We don't need that. Don't need to grab everything. 
I may notice this game has really good music. Kai Rosenkrantz came back to compose the, uh, the score for Gothic 3, but the score fits more a movie, like on an epic sense, more than actually immersing you in its uh, environment. That's not like my own thoughts. I remember watching a video on Gothic 3 not too long ago where the guy explained that, and it makes sense. But the music is really, really good. Nothing wrong with the music at all. We'll take this bread because we're hungry. We also got beds here. And the buildings look very lived in. Actually looks like a house. Back in like the 90s, even early 2000s, you would enter a house in a role playing game. And there's like maybe a bed and a chair and like that's it. Because there's just no room on those cartridges. Back in the ancient days of gaming. But this game came out in 06, and the graphics look rather nice, actually. It looks really good. It's very smooth, too. Holy crap. This game was very stuttery back when I played it. I played this game on a 5x4, um, 1280 by 1024 resolution monitor, which I still have. My dad's using it for, uh, for uh, just daily uh, internet evening use. Like, he's using it to pay taxes now. And overall, just internet shopping. A woodcutter's axe here, and all the slaves are dead. I guess that's supposed to happen. I thought maybe they died because I had alternative AI on. I died a lot, or rather, I fell down on the ground a lot with alternative AI because it's just much more difficult uh, with that on. So, this game's gonna be well, it's gonna be an easy experience. There's not much challenge in the, in the base game. Which is fine with me, because I can play easy games. And if I get bored, I can always just do the main quest and just finish it. So I don't plan on doing everything in this game. Depends if I like it or not. But I do plan on finishing it. Okay, all these guys are looted, all these orcs. And we got a crossbow bolt here. We'll take that, because we're going to use crossbows in this game. And we got a chest here. We're going to loot everything before going to uh, Reddick and talk to the rebels. Which is... Definitely one of the factions you can join in this game. And there's two more, which I won't spoil. I'll bring it up when we come to it. Just gotta think about what else to talk about while I do all this. We'll take all that. It's a nice little storeroom. Too bad there's no door. And yeah, this is very smooth. Wow, this is something else. I do remember this game being very stuttery back when it came out. It was really disappointing. But again, I don't remember being so disappointed in this game to the point of hating it. Like... A lot of um, CRPG fans. Because you may notice in the last battle, you see how the animations look pretty wonky. I'll even demonstrate real quick. Like the way he swings his weapon looks so silly. I should probably should do this outside, but whatever. In fact, I'll do that right now. We'll sprint outside. Do it right here so we don't break anything. We're not going to break anything, but I want you to see. Because the combat in the first two games is very... Uh, it's very engaging. It's very fun. In this game, it's... In the base game, at least, it's press left mouse button to win. From what, I did, from what reading I did of alternative AI on, um, you basically have to play it in a certain way. I think you have to use a spinning move with a halberd, and that's basically... Basically, uh, group fights are very, very dangerous in alternative AI. We're going to drink a healing potion. Just look at the way he swings. It's like he's... Someone said in a YouTube comment. It's like he's trying to um, spread butter on a on a piece of bread. Like, that's not going to do much damage. It just looks really silly, doesn't it? And the animations themselves are kind of just backwards compared to the first two games. Check out the sneaking animation. Like in the first two games, when he sneaks, he looks like he's really putting a lot of effort into sneaking. He's shifting all his weight from his heel to his toes, from one foot to the other. And this one, it's... Yeah, and you can pick up stuff really, really quickly if you're sneaking. Like, there's no animation to pick stuff up if you're in the sneaking animation. Alright, let's go over here, because this is, you know this, Enos. The statue of Enos, or Shrine of Enos. The God of Light. Let's click on him. Enos. And here you can increase your stuff. 
ancient magic, high knowledge of ancient magic, life force, magic power, and endurance. We'll click out of that. We're going to be in this town for a little bit because there's still stuff I want to talk about before we continue onwards. This is a little tavern here. We're going to take everything. We're a thief. We're a dirty thief. We take that. Oh, what else did I pick up? I check. Tip. All items that you pick up appear in your inventory. There are different item categories that you can select in the upper right corner. Left click on items to use or equip them. To make an item available in the quick slot bar, drag and drop it in one of the slots. Alright, we can do that. We'll put the bow here. We got a hunting bow. I think that's a hunting bow. We got um, arrows there. We'll put the healing potions here so we don't accidentally click it. And we got an orc slayer. And also, where's my large or um, dragon slaying weapon from the second game? Where's my armor? Where'd it go? Why am I wearing this? I know it's because of gameplay purposes. I'm just... Filling, filling the air with my uh, commentary. But anyways, we got an Orc Slayer, the preferred weapon of the Rebels, specially designed for the Orc War. Let's move away so that camera doesn't go in and out. It does 50 blade damage, requires 100 strength. We still have our 100 strength from the previous game, but we had a little bit more than that, but either way, 50 damage, 84 range. There's ranges in this game. Well, there was in the previous games, but either way. We got a Hunting Bow by Hunter's improved by hunters improved version of the normal bow okay um pretty cool we got some arrows here different versions of arrows we got an orc crossbow i want to use crossbows in this game you if you watch my previous playthrough you know i like crossbows more than um more than bows we also got a bunch of orc weapons we got no shields or armor we got some magical scrolls we got light that lets us see in the dark, of course. Eno sent human's light to drive out the darkness of Beliar, the god of darkness. He was the main indirect antagonist in the previous game. Heal other. The hero completely heals the other target. Pretty cool. And fireball. We'll keep these. We also have a teleporter stone to the town of Ardea, this town. We also got some potions and food. We also got... Oh, he sneezed. That's funny. We got a casket here, miscellaneous items that we'll sell. We are we almost have a thousand gold coins. That's we're gonna get a lot of money in this game. We also have a shovel that we picked up outside, and we got some swamp weed, which is called Black Robar. So Robar is the king of Mertana. I'll bring out the map right now. So we're here. This is Mertana. That's Vengard. Remember the magical barrier erection in the intro? Well, this. This is the capital, so that's where it's at. South is the place I'll mention later, and this of northern region here. We got three different regions to explore. Piranha Bites, I believe, not I believe, they were going for the Bethesda, um, a Bethesda game in scope, so this game is much more open worldy compared to Gothic 1 and 2. And a lot of the areas to me, I don't remember, I don't really remember much of any of it. I remember this town and the next town over and Reddick and that's it. Overall, there's a lot of empty expanse of land, which, I mean, it's like that in real life too, but either way, it's a video game. I vastly prefer games like Gothic 1 and 2 and Deus Ex when it comes to open-ended maps with a lot of stuff to do. Gothic 1 and 2 had a lot of stuff to do, despite the maps being pretty big. And there was a fair amount of backtracking. There will be a lot of backtracking in this game, but we will hopefully get a lot of teleporter stones, which I imagine we will. Let's loot more of this place. Got some food here. We'll leave that alone. Got a ladle there. Got a, a stove we can't use, I don't think. Let's go outside. That's a big dresser. Wow. Holy crap. Let's go over here. Um, we came from this way. We were in the smithy. And we got that broadsword blueprint. But we can't craft it yet, because we don't have the right um, ingredients. We'll take this scythe. All the slaves died. That's a shame. But we died... Well, technically, we would have died twice. But I swear, with alternative AI... We'll take these vials. With alternative AI, I, I died. I must have died. I must have fell down like five times. It's... The AI acts differently. It makes the game more tedious. And I just... I wasn't liking it at all. And we can sit in stools. I didn't mean to click on it, but now you see. This game still has the immersive streak of the first two games. 
grab these vials because we're going to do alchemy one day. One day we will. I we're currently. Anything at the moment. Oh, yes, we cannot. Grab this vial on the ground. Open this chest. And we got water. Water is used for alchemy as well, I believe. And I think uh, crafting potions. We got a carrot. And we got a healing potion recipe. We'll grab that. All those. We'll also read this book. Here it says something about alchemy. And that increases our alchemy by plus five. We have 15 alchemy now. There's nothing new here. If you try to cook the bookshelf, bookshelf. If you try to cook the bookshelf again, then um, he says that. He keeps scratching his butt. That's that's a little weird. Then again, I do that all the time. So let's click on this alchemist bench, and you can see here. I don't have the ingredients for that. Didn't mean to click that. It requires one vial, one healing plant, and one water. All we need is a healing plant. We can craft some um, basic healing potions. Pretty cool. We do have plenty, though. I drank a lot when I played this game uh, a few days ago. Because I kept dying to these darn orcs. But like I said, if you keep attacking the orcs, they eventually just block. And um, overall, it's just... A lot of players were saying it's just a crappy experience. And they'd rather just have it off. But alternative balancing sounds interesting, but I want to play this game again. Um, just like how, just how they made it, just how they released it with just bug fixes. That makes sense. Let's go ahead and save. I probably could have just used quick save. It's a little weird. I'll use quick save and every once in a while, I think every hour or two, I'll make a manual save, especially during key points. So we don't run across a broken quest or something. Let's enter this house. Got a chest here. We'll open it. And we use a lockpick. Nice. We got a regular sword. Does the same damage as our Orc Slayer, but we're going to use Orc Slayer because it's better against Orcs. We'll take this, the bow, um, a summon animal scroll. We'll take that. Endurance potion, and we'll uh, take the axe as well. We'll leave the ladle alone. Or rather, do we need a ladle? Maybe we can use it on cooking pot pots. Excuse me. I speak really, really fast. I always feel like I have to speak fast because all my life people interrupt me when I'm speaking. And even if I ask politely to finish, they do it anyway because it's a reflex of theirs. I've been like that all my life. So I guess I'm working on it, but overall, just I guess just get used to it. Let's grab this potion against diseases, bread, and lockpick. It's just one of those things. I had a few people already in the comment section that you're speaking too fast and you need to slow down. I'm like, dude, I can't just turn it off and on like a light switch. It's going to take time. Let's grab these. That's a big dresser. What the deuce? Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Look at that. That's huge. That is huge. You could fit like a whole manor's worth of clothes in there for a whole manner of people. And also, I pressed the F button. You can go in first-person view and look around. Walk around, too. You can even see your... Well, you can see the top of your character's head. That's not how it works in real life. But if you just do it a little bit, then... Well, that's pretty cool. So you can play in first-person view. They were really trying to go for the Bethesda um, gameplay here. That's not a bad thing. More was a great game. Um, didn't really... Oblivion's... Uh, I thought it was just okay. I played through it once and never really touched it again. And of course, Skyrim, everyone's favorite game, Skyrim. Which really went backwards on the RPG mechanics, but overall had a really great... Uh, was really great in scope and exploration purposes and such. Not my top 10 game or anything, but I may play it one day. There's a bookshelf here. Let's read it. It's a lectern. There's nothing new here. Uh, there's nothing new here. Okay. Got a chest. There's a lot of houses to... Uh, loot in this area. We want to get off to a good start before this let's play start. Well, this let's play is starting. We just haven't really done the fun stuff yet, like questing and exploring. We've done combat. And like I said, it's just not a good decision to uh, thrust us into combat, but at least they gave us uh, tutorial boxes, which just kind of weird to stop and read it when there's stuff going on around you. And they didn't stop with that in their later games. I think Risen 2 and 3, it starts you off in combat as well. That little pause because I did a quick save. As you can see there, oh, we're already in here. Whoops, let's go over here. 
It's also going to be nighttime, evening time. All right, can we go in here? We already... No, we didn't. Yes, we are. We have... Ugh, excuse me. We already explored this house. Let's go over here. Can we go up here? This town's actually kind of nice and cozy. The, ga the game itself is uh, very immersive. There's a uh, Vanguard way over there. Now, in Gothic 1... They required focus stones to craft, to erect a magical barrier, but I think they were just using magical ore in there. I don't know. I guess they wreck on that as well. I don't... Maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong. That's a cool idea, though, that they were so desperate to not, um, you know, lose the war that they erected a barrier around themselves to prevent the orcs from winning. The orcs are winning the war, and, um, in the Gothic universe, and Lana Mertana. Also, jumping's a little weird, like, you can jump and also you can move backward while jumping, just like in real life. Side note, not in real life. This guy had a rusty two-hander. Why do these slaves have weapons? I didn't mean to sit down. I meant to loot the guy. Can I... Can I loot him? Do we already loot him? Does he have nothing? I guess not. Okay, let's go over here. Um, got a chest here. We're almost done looting, then we can, um... You know, finally do some questing. I think we looted everything. This guy had a scythe. I guess they picked up the weapons... Uh... When we all of a sudden started attacking. But I would have liked it if, uh... When we came to town, we just... You know, we were able to talk to the people and the orcs, you know. Get some quests here. Just starting in combat was a little weird. Not a huge deal for me. I don't really make a fuss over it, but... It just f feels a little odd to read tutorial boxes... When there's action going on around you, you know? Alright, we're almost done. We gotta explore this house here and this house over there. We'll avoid Hamlar. We got, um, a lectern. Does it say anything? I already know that. He already knows that. It's too bad. So it's red before you read it, and when you open chest, and when you loot the entire chest, it goes white. I may as well loot every chest that we come across, because we don't have an inventory limit in this game. Let's go over here. Last house, I hope. Open this chest. We'll take all that. You can always sell it, and that's it. All right, let's talk to our friends. I think we'll start with good old Gorn. He can take us to uh, Reddick. Just like old times, huh? The orcs weren't all that strong. There must be other tougher ones. What about Lester? Wasn't he going to get some reinforcements? Uh, we can't trust Lester with anything. For all we know, he he uh, lost our ship. That would suck. Let's talk to Milton first. I can't help it. I don't like orcs. What's going on with Lester? He was going to get reinforcements. That's all he says. And we also have Diego. You may remember when we gathered our crew in the previous playthrough of Gothic 2. We didn't bring Diego along. We brought uh, Wolf. And we tried to let Wolf go. And he uh, tried to attack us because he was pissed off. And yet Wolf is not here. Also, his ponytail is really long. Holy crap. Let's talk to him. <laughs> Another fine mess we've got ourselves into. He's got a new voice actor. I missed the previous Diego voice actor. I thought he was pretty good, or rather, pretty memorable. What happened here? Quite obviously, the orcs have won their war against King Robar. And now the orcs are sweeping through the land, enslaving the humans. But most of all, I would like to know what happened to Lester. Very good. Next, you should talk to your old buddy Lester. Walk out of the village and follow the path to the left that leads to the coast. There, you can find Lester, who will give you more information. Talk to Lester on the beach. We will. We can also turn off tutorials, but those boxes we came that we got when we arrived here basically just tells you the combat. So basically, you attack. It says left mouse button to attack. Block with the right mouse button. Hold the right mouse button to attack like this. And do a power attack like that by holding the right mouse button. Or power attack 
like this. But overall, the combat in this game is just not as good as the first two games. The first two games was not very engaging combat. But either way, let's go down here, over here rather. I believe Lester is over here. There's a beach there. I imagine that's where we landed. Where's our ship? Uh oh. All right, there he is. That's uh. Bad news. There will be no reinforcements. So I noticed. What happened? Go look for the ship. You're not gonna find it. What? Pirates. It was all over in a moment. Oh, what the heck? You lost our ship, Lester. What the deuce? And what about our equipment? What do you think? We'll have to get some new stuff. Talk to Diego. He knows a lot about acquiring things. It's funny how they're just not bothered by the loss of their ship. What are you going to do now? I'm going to try and make it to the south somehow. But we'll meet again, surely. I should think so. Great. Now return to Diego and give him Lester's message and, and then let the adventure begin. Report to Diego. Alrighty then. We've also got a fisherman here. Don't get too close to the fire. Oh, good advice. What does this guy say? Hello there. I'm sure you have something else to do. Not really. I'm just rocking around talking to people. Yeah, I imagine this is where the ship was. That's too bad. Let's go back to Ardea real quick. But yeah, again, I don't remember being so disappointed in this game to want to sort of crap all over it. Or lack of a more better word i guess that isn't so dirty but either way i played through it once and that was it i never came back to play it because the game like i said is very it was very stuttery back then it had a lot of bugs but i did manage to finish it i think it took like 100 hours too it's a long game there's also orc weapons here this game's music is very good it just doesn't fit the atmosphere to get you sucked into the world I guess but it is nice and smooth I'm glad for these patches it feels very smooth to play though I did read that the longer you play it the more likely you are to crash because again it's an old game let's talk to Diego pirates those rotten bastards made off with our treasure looks like it we'll have to deal with that later I'm afraid you see we have a problem what problem go talk to the village elder I thought you were going to say your neck, because your neck is very craned towards us. We already did talk to him. I had a talk with the village elder. So, what do you suggest? First, we need to get an overview of the mess the orcs have been making. And one of us must find out where Zardas is hiding. The necromancer has absorbed the power of Beliar within himself. And he is master of the orcs. I think you'd better take care of Zardas. Take care of Zardas? I just want to know what he's up to. Oh, I'll mention Zardas in a minute. I forgot to recap, like, the story of Gothic that leads into this game. I'll do that in a minute. And where will we get new equipment now? But you know how this works. Collect whatever you can find, and don't let anyone take it from you. And since the orcs are now the rulers of Matana, we will get some fine equipment from them. What are you going to do now? You know me. I'll be wherever there's something to be had. Matana is now orc territory. Kissing up to orcs just isn't my thing. I will go south. I bet there are some opportunities left in the vastness of the desert. You can set out with Gorn. And there you go. The south area is the desert area. And you can probably guess what the north is, which only has like four um, main towns there. Bertana is definitely the biggest. All right, let's save. And I guess we'll talk to uh, Milton, who's smoking. He didn't smoke in the previous games, did he? Let's talk to him. My runes have lost their power. I don't think it's any different for the other fire mages. I'm going to set out and try to learn the ancient true magic. What are you talking about? Before there were runes, only a very few, very powerful people could do magic. That knowledge must be found somewhere. I will seek it. Well, we can say we can come with him, but we got a task to do, so we're just going to say good luck. Good luck. Thanks. We'll meet again. If you say you'll come with him, he says we should search separately, so go find Zardas. And next, we gotta talk to, uh... Gorn, in a minute. First, I gotta recap the story a little bit. I should've done that in the beginning. So, in the previous game, we slain the undead dragon, Beliar... Um, not Beliar. Zardas drained the undead dragon's soul, power. 
and he gave us a little bit of a warning. We think he's probably our chosen Abeliar, but he seems to have his own plans up his sleeves, and our task is to go find him and see what's going on. And we took that ship to that final area in the previous game, and we came here with some missing companions. Uh, there's no Bennett, there's no Vatris, there's no Wolf. I don't believe Wolf is even in this game. There's no Core Angar. Just Gorn, Milton, uh, Diego, who we didn't bring along in the last game, as I said. Good old Lester, who's he's just as lazy in this game, just like in the last game. And most of the first game. The first game, he did most of the action in that stone uh, castle with that deed in the colony. Do you say anything new? Keep your chin up. He does not. It's not like how... If they have nothing new to say, they just say this. We owe you so much. That's, I like that energy, but I wish more games would do that because uh, I always like expanding dialogue in games from NPCs, but I try not to do it so much because um, I like it if they have nothing more to say, they just give you a little quick response to not waste your time, if that makes any sense. Like I'm talking about JRPGs where you click on... So some Some NPCs have different dialogue, you click once, they say a piece of dialogue. You click them again, they say a different piece of dialogue, but not every NPC. Some of them have one dialogue, some have two or three, and you have this need to, well I have this need, to click over and over again to make sure I got everything from them. It gets a little annoying, so I like it when games do stuff like that, but let's go ahead and talk to Gorn. I think his voice actor is different too, his voice is uh, a little weird. What are you going to do now? I will go search for the rebels. I bet they're not all dead yet. Let's talk to him in a minute, because first I want to go show you the smithing system in this game, which is simple, just like alchemy. Get a little box coming up like that. All your recipes go here. And broadsword, this blade, the blade, is neither too short nor too long. A perfect weapon for beginners and advanced requires 110 strength, and it does 20 po more points of blade damage than our Orc Slayer, but we can't make it because it requires one wolf fur, which we don't have. But we do have one raw steel and one booze. It requires booze. Uh, I don't know if booze is required to smith weapons back in the day, but there you go. Maybe it was. Maybe that's how they... Because uh... again, I'm not... I'm not oh, excuse me. I'm not a blacksmith. I'm already stumbling over my words... Let's talk to Gorn. Show me where the rebels are hiding. It's not far from here. Follow me. And how does he know where the rebels are? Maybe he was in the military the before being tossed into the barrier. He just happens to know where it is. I don't think it's mentioned though. There's a scavenger there. We'll avoid him. Now, the game world is very big in this game. They were trying to go for the, Beth the Bethesda aesthetic, as I said. There we go. How about you? Good job, Gorn. Well, and I'm glad we got experience from an NPC killing a creature. That's good. Right, it's not too far. It's like right over here. We got this flame berry. Something else here too. That's a fire nettle. I'll grab that. See, here they are. I knew it. I really hope the orcs never find this hideout. I'll stay here for a while and then be on my way. Hang in there. See you around. All right. It's a nice little hiding spot, isn't it? But yeah, there's three factions in this game. One's in the south in the desert area. We got some healing plants. We need these. We'll take these. Just in case we need to make some more um, healing potions. Alright, let's go down here. Good old Reddick. I'll make a manual save since it's been almost an hour. Right here. Alright, so first, our character sheet. All attributes and talents of the hero are shown here. Whenever the hero goes up a level, he will receive learning points that can be used with trainers. Any talents already mastered are shown in color. For more information about the various talents, move your mouse pointer over a talent icon. So we're currently at level 2. We're kind of close to level 3. We got 20 learning points. 
We got 100 strength. We don't have dexterity anymore. It's called hunt and skill now. We have 100. Ancient knowledge is for magic. We have zero. We have 10 smithing, 10 thieving, 15 alchemy, which started at 10, thanks to that book back in Ardea, which raised it to 15. 200 life energy, 100 endurance. As I said, there's an endurance bar in this game now versus the previous two games. 100 mana, and we have no protection against anything because we're not wearing any armor. In fact, we're wearing a different piece of, uh, of his, uh, cause he had a different set, his unarmored set in the first game and the second game. The armor in this game looks very, very thick. It looks kind of silly. And you'll see once we, once we start talking to NPCs here. So we got fighting skills here. We can learn one-handed swords. There's dual wielding. You can learn that. We already have Orc Slayer, which lets us do more damage to Orcs in close range combat. Large weapons like axes, two-handed swords, halberds, and so on and so forth. Crossbows. We're eventually going to learn that. There's also shields in this game. You can learn how to use shields. You can pair with shields. It's pretty cool. Paladin. I imagine you need to join the rebels to be a paladin. Otherwise, you can't learn this. You also need to learn ancient knowledge along with it. We also have regeneration, which requires 300 strength, which is quite a bit. And hunting skills. We got... Let's just be better at bows here. Archer, Master Archer, Bow. Game Hunter lets us do more damage to animals. And double damage for the next tier. Orc Hunter for if you want to be a ranged guy. You can sneak up on wild animals, take trophies. I don't know if this is worth taking. Maybe I'll take this. Like I said, you're going to learn a lot of skills as you play this game. Or we are, rather. And you got your magic skills here. You got learn quickly. Let's let you when you're going up a level, you receive an additional learning point. I don't know if that's helpful. We're gonna get a lot anyways. Overall, I'll probably avoid these smithing skills. We're gonna learn those. Thieving skills. We're gonna steal a lot of stuff. So hopefully, we can learn all that. And alchemy and other skills. You got acrobatics, endurance of the wolf, resistance to cold, heat, diseases, and poison and here we got our magic spell book as soon as the hero has learned a spell the corresponding icon will appear in color in color in the book these icons can then be dragged and dropped into the quick slot bar and used from there for more information about a spell move your mouse pointer over the corresponding spell icon pretty cool you got dominance magic summoning magic and transformation magic it's a lot of magic so as Milton said, and Hamlar said, Zardusk destroyed runic magic. So the only kind of magic you can get is from ancient magic, as Milton said. Though it looks like that teleporter stone still works, so I don't know how it works, I guess, in this game. So this is our map, that's our spell book, that's our stats sheet inventory, and we got... Uh, our missions tabs here, our quest log. This menu shows the hero's missions and the reputation he has gained through successful missions with the various factions and in individual cities. So currently we have reputation with the rebels. It's nine o'clock in the evening right now. I like how there's a little um, seasonal, like time of day up here in regards to the sun and the moon. That's pretty cool. We got current quest, find Zardas, talk to the leader of the rebels in Reddick. We've successfully completed these, and there's no journal entry, it just shows a dialogue you have with NPCs, which I kind of miss the nameless writing stuff in his journal, but uh, either way, this game feels like they're saying it's like, they're not saying it is, it's like MMO fair style questing, I guess. Reputation gains, like it's already showing the factions they can get reputation in. You got Nordmar, which is up here. The Orcs, the Rebels, the Rangers, the Hashishan, which are the desert people, and the Nomads, which are also desert people. Okay, let's save again and talk to some people here. Just got regular Rebels here. I'm sure you have. Huh? Okay, whatever. Let's talk to this guy, Brenton. Hello. You don't look like a woodcutter. I think your place is with the warriors down in the cave. How's it going? Uh, not so good. 
We were chased away from our post by aggressive wild boars. I already told the warriors, but they only think about fighting the orcs. If those beasts don't disappear soon, we won't be able to keep working. Then here we go. This is going to be our first uh, quest we're going to grab. What will you give me if I kill the wild boars at your post? I'm just a simple worker. I don't have much. But if you help us out, I'll give you 30 gold coins. Oh, that's a lot. We'll take it, though. I'll deal with the wild boars. Where are they? Go up these stairs and go east into the woods a bit. Got it. All right, we got a new quest. Kill the aggressive wild boars. Can we go in here, though? We can. I'm hoping we can sleep in here, because... I like to sleep be, uh, sleepy. I like to sleep during the night. Let's try to talk to the rest of these rebels. Does Gorn say anything new? Watch out for yourself. He does not. Let's go ahead and save real quick. Let's see if we can open this chest without the rebels getting mad. Okay, they got a light spell, fireball, mana potion. We'll take all of it. Why not? They don't seem to mind. Man, am I hungry? All right. Rebel, rebel, rebel. Okay, let's go in the cave. Got some mushrooms here. Demon mushrooms. That's forbidding. There's also a skeleton here, which they didn't bother to um, bury. They must be busy. Alright. Good old Reddick. I remember this area. Rebels living in a cave. The war is not going too well, as I said. The orcs are really hammering them. Because the king can't get... Magical ore for his army after um, the barrier around the colony exploded. Thanks to yours truly. Can we go in here? There's a mage who's looking right at us. Hello there, Sebastian. What? Oh yes, I uh, I am a bit jumpy. I'm sorry. What can I do for you? His voice sounds familiar. Is that uh, the uh, what's his name in Skyrim? Shoot. On tip of my tongue. Who are you? My name is Sebastian. I am the alchemist here in Red Oak. Ulfric. Y'all Ulfric. You wear the clothes of a fire mage. Before the war, I was a high mage of the fire. Then came the day when we fire mages lost our rune magic. And soon after that, the war was over. The robe is all I have left of my rank. Sucks to be a fire magician now you can't cast magic anymore. Making you, uh... For lack of a better word, useless against the orcs. Why did you fire mages lose your magic? I have spent many sleepless nights trying to answer that question. All I know is that we could no longer hold off the orcs without our rune magic. Many fire mages were killed. And those that survived the debacle fled to the woods. What will you do now? I will stay here in Red Oak and study the ancient writings of our ancestors. Legend has it that the ancient ones possessed their own kind of magic. It was completely independent of aids such as the runes from which we draw our magic. No one told us about that. Tell me more about the magic of the ancient ones. All that is certain is that the Ancient Ones existed and that their artifacts can be found everywhere in the ruins. Even today, the only way to learn more about their magic is to unravel the mystery of those ruins. All the surviving Fire Mages are researching the ancient knowledge. Alright, still got some more stuff. Let's choose alchemy. Tell me something about alchemy. It is the only way of healing and strengthening yourself. Without magic, I am no expert, but my abilities are enough to supply Red Ark with what is absolutely necessary. Hmm. Tell me more about the artifacts of the Ancient Ones. The Orcs are obsessed with searching for these valuable relics. Every dealer in the land knows that, and will offer you a correspondingly high price. Many artifacts are of great value to us mages as well, such as the fire chalices, for example. Hmm. What is so special about the fire chalices? The fire chalices are ancient and were thought to have been lost for many years. It is said that they possess powerful magical capabilities. But I am no expert. 
If you should find a fire chalice, take it to my brethren in Nordmar. They will be able to tell you more about it than I can. All right, how about alchemy? Teach me what you know about alchemy. I would gladly do that. But unfortunately, I don't have enough ingredients to teach you. If you can get me ten healing plants, I will share my knowledge with you. That's some loud music. I should probably turn it down. I'll get you some healing plants. These plants grow almost everywhere. I don't think you will have a problem finding them. How about your goods? Show me your goods. Alright, he's got... Nothing. Here you can buy goods, sell them, or barter them. Simply drag the items you want to buy from the vendor's inventory to the field in the lower left. Drag any items you want to sell or trade to the field in the lower right. If the goods are of equal value, a trade is made. If the values are not equal, you can make up the difference by clicking on gold balance. Okay. Oh, he does have stuff. Okay. He's got 12,000 gold. He's got uh, recipes. Different kinds of healing potion recipes here, which I imagine requires high alchemy skill to, uh, to use. Mana potions. Oh, these permanently increase your uh, stats here. Probably choose those eventually. All right. Um, there's nothing we want here. I guess we'll sell some stuff, I guess. Nah, let's leave him alone. All right, let's go ahead and save. Always save after talking to someone. This is what I do. Let's go over here. There's a guy here. Marlo, hello there. Welcome, stranger. What can I do for you? Do you need food, clothes, or maybe a hefty swig from the bottle? Marlo will sell you everything you need here on the coast. Who are you? I am Marlo. I am the best merchant on the coast from Ardea all the way to Cape Dunn. What interests me most are valuable items. Items such as silver, gold, and jewels. I take everything. What do you do with the junk? I know ways to convert the stuff into shiny coins, and we need them. So you're supporting a good cause when you bring me the stuff. Where do you get your goods? We have people in the cities who take care of our supplies. Once you have brought us a few valuables, they will let you know who they are. All right. Where can I find trade goods here on the coast? I can give you some information, but not for free. Well, this is cheap. What can I find in Cape Dunn? That fat alchemist in Cape Dunn has a chest where he stores his stuff. The orcs pay him with the booty from their campaign. There ought to be some good stuff to be had there. Fat alchemist? Can you just give me his name? Why'd you have to call him fat? That's mean. Um, okay. Where can I find trade goods here on the coast? I can give you... Skip that. What is in the wilderness of the coastal region? The area here is primarily controlled by bandits. The boss of the gang is called Ortega. He collects his booty in a cave somewhere in the north. If there is any loot to be had on the coast, then that's the place. Somewhere in the north, got it. Show me your goods. Let's see what he has. We already have a world map, which is that. Um, ingredients to make booze. Well, uh, we'll take that, I think. Hold on, is there three there? Like, how do I just get one? Or is that just part of the map? There we go. You press, press, you have to press right click to just choose one. Got it. Empty bottle there. We got a Smith's hammer here. We already have that. Oh, uh, pickaxe. You can use that for prospecting. We'll uh, buy that. Why not? And what else can we get? We got some lock picks here. Do we need those? We got five. Um, we'll leave that be. Let's go ahead and sell some stuff. Um, shovel. Isn't as valuable as a gold chalice, but we do get some gold out of it. Got some caskets here. And, uh... I guess we'll keep food. Maybe it's used to uh, cook and stuff. You can cook in this game just like in the previous game. And Gothic 1. We'll also sell all these, uh... Axes and stuff. The orc weapons. Orc crossbow. Keep the bolts, keep those. Sell this regular bow. And sell this uh, rusty two-hander, which is not very good. And this regular sword. 
That gives us 3,446 pieces of gold, which we'll trade. And yeah, that's it. Now we got a little bit of money. What if I can buy some armor or something? Save. These guys are just rebels. They have nothing to say. Anything in here? Female rebel. You'd better go now. Okay, goodbye. Let's go down here. Another skeleton that they didn't uh, bother uh, burying. Too bad. And yeah, I remember this area. Most of the game was pretty unmemorable to me. That's just the kind of a thing with open world games, I guess. Except maybe Skyrim, Morrowind. I don't want any trouble. Alrighty then. That's a big boar. You guys are gonna eat well. Now let's talk to this guy. You're new here, aren't you? Many refugees have joined us in Reddick lately, but your face isn't familiar. Are you in charge here? I'm the most experienced man here when it comes to fighting orcs. I guess that would make me something like a leader of this rebel camp. You're wearing a paladin's armor. I used to be a paladin before the orcs won the war for themselves. I fought for the king in the last battle for Vengard, the capital. Now I'm just a refugee, just like everybody else here. Tell me more about the war. There isn't much to say about that, my friend. Once we paladins lost our magic and ran out of magic ore, we didn't stand a chance. We ended up being easy prey for the orcs. Hmm. How can I support you? There are many possibilities for furthering our cause. Just walk around here and ask the people in the camp. We need to prepare for the revolution in Cape Dunn. Explain this revolution thing to me. The cities of Mertana are ruled by orcs, but some of us rebels are lying low within the cities. When the time comes, the rebels will mobilize both slaves and free humans for the revolution. You must find these undercover rebels and follow their orders if you want to support us. And that's one path in this game. So you can join the rebels, or you can join the, uh, well you can join the orcs, you saw it in the missions tab. I need weapons. So do we. Unfortunately, there is one small problem with that. Our last smith died in combat. Since then, our smithy has been abandoned. If you know somebody who could take his place, send him to us. All right, we got a quest. Reddick needs a smith. What do you know about Zardis? No more than everyone else does. He's in cahoots with the orcs, or so they say. If you want to find out more, try their shamans. The only problem is, Getting them to talk to a human in the first place. Well, we talked to one in the first game. I'm sure we can do that again. We drove the orcs out of Ardea. So we owe this to you. Well done. Our people will take care of things from now on. I have other tasks for you if you want to help us. And we got some extra reputation with the rebels and a thousand experience points. Who is this undercover rebel in Cape Dunn? He's moving among the slaves in Cape Dunn, so we won't be recognized. I hope they haven't found him out yet. I will not tell you who it is. I don't know you well enough for that. But if you can gain his trust, tell him that Javier sent you to support him. Will do, okay. Let's go ahead and save. After we look around a little bit real quick. Got a little arena here. Got a rusty sword in the ground there, rusty battle axe. Anything in here? What if we can just take stuff? I don't think we can. No need to steal everything. You get plenty of gold in this game, I'm sure. Just like in the second game. We had almost 60,000 gold in the second game, I believe. Also, what time is it? Wrong one. There we go. It's midnight. So, yeah, there's a town liberation missions you can do. And from what I remember... And from what I read, it's actually better to do every quest you can before joining a faction, which is a little weird um, in this game. You can join, but you'll miss out on uh, optional quests and such, which is kind of a downside to this game and I guess other games. But in the first, when I play, when I play this back, then I joined the uh, the rebels, but I might not for this playthrough. I don't think I will. Hey, you look like you could take a beating or two. 
What about a little fight in the arena? You want to go up against me? <laughs> well, not really. You're among friends here. We humans must stick together against the orcs. I need some training. You look like you might be an equal opponent. Let Norris explain the arena fighting rules to you. And then let the fun begin. Alright. Let's go talk to Norris. There he... Oh, I thought that was him. That's not him. I think he went to sleep. Oh no. He did go to sleep. Okay. Alright, I guess we gotta go to sleep too. Shoot. So let's go back to... The main area. I think time goes by pretty quickly in, um, in this game. Oh, here we go. Can I sleep here? You guys mind? Good night. Man. What do you want? Except till next morning. I can just lays on his back like that. Let's go back down here. And where is he? Should be morning time, right? It's 8 o'clock. Hey, wake up. What is it? Hello. Ah, a new man. Norris, not Chuck Norris. Norris in Gothic 3. What are you doing here? I'm taking care of our forces in Reddock. We keep training and trying to prepare as best we can for a battle with the orcs. The closed off area over there is our training arena. See how thick that armor is? It looks a little... Maybe it's just me. It looks a little city, silly. You fight against each other in your arena? That's the best training there is. Unfortunately, the orcs agree completely. They have an arena of their own in almost every city. They value a fighter who wins arena battles very highly. That's good to know. That makes sense too. How exactly does the arena work? You challenge someone to fight and meet him in the arena. As soon as you enter the arena, it starts. Is that all? Not quite. There are two rules. First, anyone who leaves the arena in the middle of a fight loses. Second, when one of the fighters is on the ground and doesn't get back up, the fight is over. If you kick someone who's down or kill your opponent, you will be called to account by everyone. I see. Show me how to fight. All right. I'll show you how to handle weapons if you make yourself useful for our camp. What should I do for you? Our smithy has been shut down for days, but the battles with the orcs haven't decreased. If you bring us five bundles of weapons, that would help our cause tremendously. Hmm. Where can I find bundles of weapons? Where there are orcs, there are weapons. Mostly, they can't do anything with human weapons, so they collect those, pack them in bundles, and store them somewhere. I see. Would you teach me how to fight? Alright, so he can teach us strength, plus one, plus five, just like in the previous game. You can learn how to be a better swordsman. That cost a bit of gold. Large weapons will avoid... We're going to use one-handed weapons, I believe. I don't know if two-handed weapons are very good in this game, besides halberds. I can't remember. You can learn how to use shields, but overall, I think I'm going to forget about that for now. I'm trying to figure out what to learn first. Let's check out, check this out. Need 150 for the next right here. We're almost level 3, by the way. That's cool. I like to learn these right here. The hunting skills. Like, right away, so I can... Oh, you know, get the most money out of the game, which I like doing. But let's go ahead and save real quick. Right here. And... We'll talk to that guy who wanted to fight us. Copper. Meet me in the arena. All right, so let's see what you've got. And here we go. Come here. Hey, folks, there's a fight. <gasps> oh, I blocked that. What the heck? It. All right, how about you? Watch out! Ow, ow. Defend yourself! Ow. They put down your weapon. Smart boy. Oh, what? Messed up, didn't I? All right, let's try that again. Load our first save. Hopefully, it won't crash. Right, let's talk to Copper again. Got that? You, if you leave the arena, you lose. 
Meet. Come here. There's a fight. Ah. Darn it. Alright, let's reload that again. Messing up pretty bad. Oh, there's a quick save. That's cool. Making sure to reload because I don't want to risk the quest being gone forever, which I'm sure is fine. Let's try this again. Didn't have a problem last time doing this. Come here. How about you? Bay Victus. There we go. That gives us plus one to strength, 250 experience, and 50 experience for slaying, or not slaying, besting a person in one-on-one -on -one combat. Pretty cool. So we're level three. We got 30 learning points. Um, don't know what else to learn here. I'd like to learn this. These. You won the fight. Good job. You got what it takes. Thank if you. If you need a comrade in arms to fight by your side, I'm your man. Oh, that's good to know. We'll come back if we need him. There's one more person we can fight here. And I believe this is like this in every city and every Webo encampment. Joey. That's a fitting fantasy name, isn't it? If I were you, I wouldn't venture too far into this cave system. What's wrong with these caves? We haven't completely explored them yet. There's supposed to be another exit somewhere to the east. Unfortunately, the eastern caves are teeming with beasts. Is this a former mine by any chance? It's possible. But if that is the case, then nothing has been mined here for years. We found these caves the way they are now. We just had to clean them of some cave beasts. What's your job? I'm on guard duty. I'm watching the southern exit of Reddick. In my spare time, I train in the arena for the real thing. Let's see what he has to sell. Show me your goods. Alright, he's got sharp arrow. We don't need that. It's worth a fair bit, too. 12,000 coins. Um, the Nimrod bow. I think that's one of the best bows in the game, too. So, I think if you uh, have alternative balancing on... Or have a patch installed, which I don't have. I forget which. I think it's alternative balancing. You can't buy this. You have to find it somewhere. And that goes the same for other powerful weapons in this game. But he has nothing at once. So let's just close that. And save again. And choose this. I will eliminate the beasts from your eastern passage. That's insane, stranger. You should prepare if you want to have any chance at all. And we probably won't go in there just yet. We'll probably explore and see what's in there, though. Would you fight me in the arena? Why not? A little more training can't hurt. All right, let's go ahead and get out of that. Save again. Just in case we mess up. Fight with me in the arena. All right. But don't forget that this is only a sparring match. We'll meet in the arena. All right, let's go get him. I think he uses his halberd. Or spear, rather. Nope, he does now not. We'll see How about you? Whoa. Come on, you can take him. Remember to block. There we go. That's two guys down. Reputation is now at 10 with uh good old Reddick. It says right here. 10 here. 100 with Ardea, because we liberated it. And everywhere else, everywhere else is zero, I believe. It's always the little guy. Oh, you agree to fight me? Let's talk to him again. Well fought. You just knocked me off my feet. Here, have this healing potion. It'll help with your wounds. My wounds? I think you need it more than I do. All right, go back to uh, work, and we'll save. And we'll talk to someone. I think we missed talking to someone. Someone here sells armor. I just don't know who. Let's go back up to... Or not up. Let's go over here first. Check this area out. Magic root. We'll take that. Pick up plants. I don't know which plants are important. But if I see King Sauron picking that up... 
Right up. So I think we're gonna do some alchemy in this game. I don't know. Goblin. How about you? Oh, yeesh. We're not doing too well. There's another one. Yeesh. It's basically just press left mouse button left mouse button to win. Cudgel. Cudgel. They got some just basic stuff, I guess. Let's heal up a little bit. This will let's go back further a little bit. Cause I'm gonna make a hard save. Here, just in case something happens. Then we're gonna go back in. Let's get our weapon ready. See if we can take out these gobos. Alright. How about you? Oh, they do like ah, combat in this game. Shoot. Might die. It's not working. Can I bait him? Yeesh. Maybe I should get a shield in this game. I think that'll be, uh... That'll be better. Get all that. Let's go ahead and drink a potion. We got a lizard over here. Can we take him out? That's, that's, that's the important question. How about you? I don't think you can block lizard attacks either. I think we're gonna die too. Our first death, watch. No, we we won. Alright. We can't skin it, fortunately. That guy's got a rusty sword. A lot of skeletons here. And we're not done with the cave at all, so... Let's explore these chests, or rather, let's loot these chests. Terror. The mage is surrounded by an aura of fear, which only the strongest enemies can withstand. Cure disease, shovel, and raw steel. We'll grab all those. And I don't think you can loot. I don't think you can store items in chests safely in this game. I'm not sure. Quarterstaff, tame animal. That's cool. Heal other. A teleport stone to Redick. That's going to be handy. Bison fur and twenty gold coins. We'll take all that stuff. Also, we're poisoned a little bit. Let's uh, open our inventory. Or disease. Let's save first. Drink this. There we go. Drink the healing potion too, because we're hurt. We took a lot of damage. Because sometimes it feels like blocking is not working, I guess. Maybe some of the attacks can't be blocked. But let's save and... Explore a bit further in this cave system. Another lizard. Let's go ahead and try to use our bow. Hold down the left mouse button in order to draw the bow. The white aiming guide in the middle of the screen shows where your arrow will land. W-I-L will. As soon as you release the left mouse button, the arrow is shot. The longer you hold the mouse button, the farther the arrow will fly. Okay. At you. It does some damage. We're back. Oh, that was so much easier than fighting him. Can we get these arrows back? No. I like how it's still in the body, too. I don't know if it's a good idea to get your hunting skills up before skinning bodies, but I don't think it matters anyways. Worst comes to worst, I get soft locked or something, and I don't have to play this game. Because who knows if I'll like it or not, but so far it's okay. Guess I'm not too bothered by some of the things about Gothic 3. So let's just try to have fun. We'll fight these these lizards here. There's like three of them here. Holy crap. Uh-oh. All of them are come at come at us. That's not good. Can we kill this one? 
There we go, that's one. Let's run away. Guys run away again. There we go, that's two. I hear a dog, that was weird. Probably above ground. Let's run back. How about I didn't trigger a quest up there or something? Ah, oh, that was close. That was really close. There we go, we leveled up. Level 4 already. Alright, let's go back. Yeah, I heard a dog. Hope, hope it didn't trigger like a quest up there or something that I'm gonna miss. These old games, sometimes. I'm gonna pause there to clear my throat a little bit. Alright, rusty sword. Rusty sword, I guess. Leave those alone. Just battle axes. And the chest, a metal chest. Can we loot it? Too hard. It's too hard. Pick difficult lots as needed. Um, I guess I'll write that down. Difficult chest. Reddick cave. Go. Yep. I guess we'll pick these up. Get some, get a little bit extra money. We can always use money in this game. Because we still need to buy some armor. Who I missed. There's a guy up above that can... Let's sell some armor, I hope. Let's go this way. There's some mushrooms, more... Oh, there's a... Uh, lizard. Let's try to take him out with just our sword, because we're running low on arrows. How about you? There we go. Both these magic roots are important. I bet they're used to make mana potions, which we likely won't need. Because I'm basically just going to go... You know what I'm going to go. I'm going to go um, play a fighter thief guy like in the previous game. Oh, mine crawlers. I don't know if we're ready to take out, take off, take them on yet. We'll try. How about you? There's that famous music that you're going to hear a lot in this game. Wow, okay, we killed it. And it's shaking all over the place. And now, we are... Where are we? Right here. We got, uh... Some broken crates, a uh, wheelbarrow here. Healing plant, we'll grab that. King Sorrel, nice, we'll grab that. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and grab those healing plants for Sebastian back in, um, back in Reddick. Let's got some gold on the ground here. We'll grab that. Gold piece saved is gold piece earned, right? We also have a, uh, casket here. We'll grab that. Grab all the things. And we'll save. Uh, I'm really marveling how smooth this is. 60 frames per second. It was so stuttery back when I played this in 06. Wow, that was 18 years ago. I was barely 20 then. Never thought I'd play this again. Okay, let's go ahead and open this chest. That's too hard. Also too hard. Okay, there's two. I'm gonna write that down because I want to come back here later, I guess. I don't know if these chests are tailored to your uh level? I think they are. I, actually, I think they are. Shoot. Oh, it's one of those games, isn't it? Darn it. That's one thing I don't like in games. Skyrim did that. <laughs> I didn't like it in that game. I don't like hate it or anything. It's where you get, you know, 
They say you get like Mehrun's Razor in that game. For those who played Skyrim, it's a Daedric artifact. A dagger that does... Uh, um, it's a unique weapon. And yet, if, you're at a, if you get it at an early level and you're level up, some leveled item you get in a chest at the end of the dungeon is going to be stronger than it, which always bugged me. Thankfully, there's mods to fix that, to make weapons level up with you. Which is what I always used. Okay, do we have all the healing plants right now? I think we got all of them, right? All ten. Good old fetch questing, right? But again, stuff like that just never bothered me. But here, we got some... Some deer. You can have deer if you want to. I hear something. I hear a wolf. Wildberry. Alright, I think we got all of this. So I think we're ready to go back to... Uh, Reddick. Got 14. Nice. Let's go and save. And let's go back to Reddick. After picking this up. Got about 30 minutes left. 29 minutes of this playthrough. Hope it goes well. Yeah, let's talk to uh, this guy. Be very careful when roaming through the woods here. Orc scouts are everywhere in this region. Tell me more about this place. This is the largest rebel camp on the coast. We call it Reddick. Many royalists who haven't yet been enslaved by the orcs are hiding here. I really hope for your sake that you aren't a spy for the orcs. Or we'll make short work of you. I see. I see, he says. The orcs don't know about this rebel camp? If the orcs knew we were hiding out here, they would have certainly killed us by now. Tell me more about the rebels. We are the only free humans in Mertana who are still fighting the orcs. Orc patrols are our biggest problem here on the coast. Last night, they came dangerously close. Where are the orc patrols now? One orc patrol is constantly on the move. Right now, they are between us and Ardea. Another has parked itself on a farm to the east, between here and Cape Dunn. If we don't take care of them now, they will stumble upon Reddick sooner or later. What about the humans working for the orcs? Most of them are slaves. But there are some human orc mercenaries as well. Within certain limits, they are allowed to move freely among the orcs. I can only hope you're not going to mingle with them. Might. Why should I avoid the orc mercenaries? People who team up with the enemy are the enemy. The path of the orc mercenary is the easy way, with no freedom, and against Enos, our god. I will go visit the orc patrol on the farm. Be careful. If they take you for a rebel, they will chop you to pieces. I'll take care of the roaming orc patrol. Do that. But be careful so they don't find our camp here. Show me your goods. Alright, so he's got stuff here. A two-hander. We can't use that because it requires a lot of strength and large weapons skill. A long sword, we need 150 strength. Does 75 damage. Um, mercenary crossbow is preferred by the orc mercenaries. The reload is simplified by the stirrup ahead. Halberd, heavy branch. Paladin armor, of course you can't wear this because you need uh, a high rep with the rebels to wear such a thing. I think you have to finish a quest too. So we can grab a light horned helmet, which is a bit expensive. Farmer's clothes. The clothes of a Mertanian farmer. Leather garb. This outfit made by hunters offers rather pr offers rather protection against the nature than against weapons, but is very... Is very what? Who knows? We got light rebel armor, a military scout armor, which is used further in the ranks of the rebels. Regular rebel armor. It is the former standard army armor and offers primarily body protection. Heavy rebel armor. The Mertanian assault armor features not only with steady quality, but also with good design. And Paladin. We're going to buy the regular old all right. leather armor right here. And we'll give him quarterstaff in return, I guess. All these rusty weapons here. We have all that. Uh, anything else I can give you here? That's enough. Oh. Right. 
Then we got our first piece of piece of armor. Leather armor. Or right that. Gives us 10 to blade, 10 to impact, and 5 to missile. 4% for both these, blades and impact, and 2% for missiles. It's better than nothing. So let's save right here. And to figure out what else to do, we gotta go back down here in the cave. Because we gotta talk to Joey and let him know that, hey, we'll clear that cave out of monsters. I didn't think we were able to do that. You think you have to come back later. Like I said, the progression in this game is just not as good as the first two games, from what I remember. And you saw how the combat works so far. For those of you who watched Gothic 1 and 2, or even just played them, you know that uh, those... The combat in those games is very engaging. It's just very fun for me. Right, let's talk to Joey. Oh dear. Reddick's southern exit is clear. You mean the beasts are gone? Incredible! This will make my guard duty by the southern exit much more relaxed. Thanks. That's worth a few gold coins to me. Then we got uh, 500 gold coins. Nice. And now we currently have... 30 reputation with Reddick. And quests are tailored to each region, each town. We gotta talk to Sebastian, give him... Um, those healing potions, uh, plants, excuse me, before we leave. We gotta go to Cape Dunn after this, which is not far from here. And I remember the layout to that place pretty well. And here he is. Hello. Here are your plants. Here are your ten healing plants. Wonderful. Now I can share my knowledge with you. All right. Um... Teach me something about ancient magic. So he can teach you the ancient knowledge skill. Learn faster. I'm not sure if we need to use, uh, choose that, actually. You just get one additional learning point. Is that really helpful? When going up a level, the hero receives an additional learning point, so... I don't think that's a waste, isn't it? And you need 100 ancient knowledge for that anyway. Screw that. Okay, let's just uh, check our quest here. Let make the orc patrol. Find the rebel underground in Cape Dunn. Get rid of the roaming orc patrol between Reddick and Ardea. Aggressive wild boars. Reddick needs a smith. Weapons for the rebels and Reddick. But yeah, you can join the rebels or the orc mercenaries. And we're probably going to go with the orc mercenaries because I've already played rebel back when it came out, and from what I remember, or rather, what people say, doesn't really matter. And they all say, they do say that if you want to do all the optional quests, you have to put off joining a faction. Otherwise you get locked out, which is... Yeah. So let's go ahead, I guess... We should probably go ahead and learn uh, how to get a stronger shoot. Let's explore the wilderness a little bit before ending this playthrough. We've got about 12 minutes to go. Got something here. There's well, there's a plant, a wild berry. Got a skeleton on the ground and a chest. Which has just general stuff. We'll grab all that. Pretty sprawling environment, isn't it? They definitely wanted to go the Bethesda way. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I like to see a uh, Bethesda game, but with like the combat of like Dark Messiah and the character progression exploration of Gothic 1 and 2. That'd be a great game. It doesn't even need to be open world, like open-ended, like Gothic 1 and 2 was would be pretty cool. There's a scavenger over here. We'll take it out. How about you? Oh, okay. How about me, I guess? There's one annoying thing I forgot about. Fighting creatures. Wolves and boars were very dangerous in the base game. Because they can stun lock you. It was really annoying. Really, really annoying. I think we'll just go to Cape Dunn. 
Oh, another scavenger hiding in the wheat. <laughs> well, if we die to a scavenger, I'm gonna be like... Uh, this combat. Yeesh. Here we go. I should probably use my healing potion, but I'm getting stingy with it. Let's go ahead and save. Might want to raise strength after, uh... What is that? Or a dog. Alright, save. And I guess we'll talk to, uh... This guy, Cliff. Don't fool around here, stranger. Or the orcs will punish us. What are you doing here? I'm a slave to the orcs. They make me work as a woodcutter on this farm. I'm working my butt off here, even though I'm actually a blacksmith, damn it. But a smith doesn't count for much with the orcs if he's only human. You're a blacksmith? Can you teach me your art then? Ha! <laughs> How can I do that without a forge? I'm sorry, but that's asking too much. Find me a smithy with no orcs around, and I will show you whatever I can. I see. Alright, well, I guess we have to free him, huh? I will set you free. Balderdash. The orcs are going to skin you alive. Yeah, we'll see about that. Okay, these are just, uh... Okay, that's a scout, that's a warrior, and that's a uh, scout there. We'll save again. Walk in here. Toe pork. Talk to him. What are you doing here, Mora? Shouldn't you be working in the fields? I hope for your sake that you already have an owner. Otherwise, you belong to me now. Yeesh. He doesn't waste time, does he? I want your slave out there. You're in no position to want anything. You're going to give me a full explanation, Mora. Yeah. I have come to challenge you to a duel. <laughs> Pretty cocky of you, little man. But whatever you want, you'll have your fight. No one beats me, Mora. Duh! No! Duh! Gah! Duh! No! Duh! No! Ooh. Uh. Ooh. That was easy. Oh, so he's dead, right? Can I loot him? Can't highlight his corpse. There we go. All right, we uh, defeated Topork. Kind of a funny name. Drinking is good. Guess these orcs don't care because we beat him in a duel. All right, you're free. I am sure you must have more important Next things time to I'll do. Get you, Mora. Oh. Took all his stuff too. You fought well, Mora. He didn't die. What prize do you want for winning your fight? Come on, gold. We're your slave out there. I want your slave out there. He isn't worth a successful fight, Mora. You disappoint me. But if you want him, you can have him. And now go. I have things to do. Yeah, it looked like he died there for a second. I couldn't really tell. Anyway, let's go get Cliff. You are mine now. What? Really? How did you do that? It's better if you don't ask. The rebels in Reddick are in need of a blacksmith. Hey, that's wonderful. Finally, I get to work as a smith again. But I don't even know where to find this place, Reddick. I will take you to Javier. He's in charge in Reddick. Thank you very much, stranger. Let me know when it's time to go. I'll take you out of here. Good. All right. Um, do I have to actually run there? Let's see if uh, teleporting works. I don't think it's going to. Left click in order to cast the spell to improve your chances of success. Hold down the left mouse button until the spell activates itself. We'll do that. I don't believe it works. Nope, that does not work. Reload. Got about 16 minutes. If I said 12, then I was wrong. I can't tell time. Alright, let's go... 
uh, over here. This way. I don't, don't want to run into any enemies. And I don't think he can sprint either. We're gonna have to go slowly. Okay, let's go back to, uh... Let's go back to Reddick. I'm gonna skip ahead, so I'll see you there. Actually, never mind. It was... It's actually not too far away. That little pause was because I wrote it down, but... Anyways, here you go. Off to, uh, Javier. Down here. Yeah, it's not too far, so I'll just run here and try to talk. But yeah, so far, um... It's been almost two hours. I'm not hating it. But it's definitely a far cry from Gothic 1 and 2, combat-wise, animation-wise, character progression-wise. But either way, I'm sure I'll have fun with this game. It'll be exciting to go through it. With a new perspective, I guess. I might not review this either. I'm not sure yet. Because this game's going to take up a lot of space on my second hard drive. Solid state drive, excuse me. Alright, here we go. Cliff is a blacksmith, and will work for you from now on. You did well, stranger. Now we can resupply our weapon stock. There we go. They got themselves a... blacksmith. Go mind your own business. Oh, that was mean. I just helped you out, too. Let's talk to Cliff. Thank you very much, stranger. I will never forget what you did for me. Take this as a token of my gratitude. 300 gold, wow. Show me your goods. So he's got long sword and ruby, ruby blade to uh, learn. He's also got a crossbow, which we can't use yet. We gotta learn how to use a crossbow first. War crossbow, that's cool. Pick axe. Bastard's sword. The sword is a mix of one-hander and two-hander with extended hilts. Rapier, regular old sword. It's worth uh, 16,000. Mm. I gotta figure out what points to put into my skills first. I guess just strength. You should have this water barrel and it restores your health. We're gonna do that. Just drink away. So if you're too stingy with health, health potions in your patient, you can just drink out of this water bottle, over, water barrel over and over again. I bet it's all nasty if it feels like in real life, too. Let's go ahead and save. And what else am I going to do right now? I guess, I guess we can find uh, try to find those wild boars. I don't even know. Reddick's at 70 now. I wonder if... Uh... What do you want? No, he doesn't say anything new. All right, so let's go back, I guess, to the overworld. And, uh, find those wild boars. This music is really good, but it gets really loud. So I hope everything, uh, when I do the sound mixing, everything will work great. Let's get out of here. Come on. But this game is basically, for Piranha Bytes, this is where they, uh, began to misstep. Um, Risen 1 is a good game, though. So is Elix 1. I heard Risen 2 and 3 aren't very good, but I do want to play those after Risen 1. I haven't finished Risen 1 yet. I don't, I don't think I got too far into it back back when I played it. And I still have my DVD copy. I'm looking forward to playing that on here one day. I just don't know whether to stream it or just do a Let's Play. I honestly enjoy doing these Let's Plays a little bit more. Because then I can just sort of talk to myself and... Upload it. But I do plan on streaming something. If you made it this far, I installed Arx Fatalis. I plan on playing that uh, hopefully next Tuesday. I got it all set up with Arx Libertatis, the mod. So hopefully we can play that. 
I haven't played that game in a long time. That was my first dungeon crawler in high school. First dungeon crawling game I've ever played in my life. Wild berry. Okay, um, let's check the quests. Here. War patrol on the farm. Uh, where is it though? It doesn't even say here. That's shoot. I'm sure we'll find it. Go up these stairs and go east into the woods a bit. Alright, we're going the wrong way, but let's go over here anyways. Oh, there's also a... Oh, I thought that was a silver chalice. Never mind. Healing root. We'll grab that. We can use that for potions. Also got another wild berry. Don't know what that's used for. Healing plant. We'll grab that. There's also a lot of stuff here. Not a lot of stuff. There's a silver goblet. We'll grab that. A loot. Could that be Yolo's loot? No, because this is the gothic universe. Yolo doesn't exist. He lives in Britannia. Casket. Destroyed crates. Got some deer. Leave them alone. Let's grab this plant over here. Uh, I kind of missed Gothic 2 already. Let's go up here. Hopefully we can find those boars. And we'll put this part 1 um, to a close. What is that there? Is that a blood fly? I hope not. I should probably go ahead and raise strength next. I'll probably do that in the next playthrough. I'm just not sure what to learn first. Like, I wanted to learn... I was, I'm always the kind of player that wants to learn the mist skills like... Teeth, claws, horns, animal skins, reptile hides. That way I can get the most money, but again, I just don't think it matters in this, uh... In this game. Because we already have uh, a bit of gold. We got, uh... 4,000. I'm sure we'll get a lot. There's a chest down there. Um, here's something. All right. Arrows. Nice. We'll just take all that stuff. That's a... Uh, that's a wolf. Let's uh, avoid him. Where are these boars? Shoot. Go east into the woods a bit, they say. Iron stem, we'll take that. Got about eight minutes left. Hmm. There they are. Let's go ahead and save, and we're going to use our bow. Because we're not going to fight three boars at once because in the base game, they can stun lock you. I think they fixed it in the community patch. Well, there's four of them. Shoot, that's not good. Holy shit. Pardon the language. I'm getting uh, PTSD flashbacks from these guys. Huh? Oh. Okay. There's the, uh, here's the orcs. I'm sure they won't mind if I take these healing plants. And we'll probably fight them in the next playthrough once I level up my, I think, strength next. Because we haven't encountered a hunting skill trainer yet. Let's go back to where those boars are. Right over here. Uh oh. Let these orcs take care of it, I guess. There are even more of the beasts. They must all be killed. These orcs are handy. They're helping us out. Save again. Let's go back to the old... The boars. Almost hit orcs. I always get tongue-tied when I do these... On um, playthroughs. 
In real life, too. It's not gonna work. Alright. At you. Thank, uh, thank Enos for... for that. What level are we? Almost level 6 already. Shoot. It's only been 2 hours. Yeah, they stunlocked the crap out of you in the uh, base game, though. Looked like he did it just now. Death uh, died to a boar. That's great. Boars and wolves were really dangerous in the base Gothic game, but it looks like they are now. There's just, like, no way to block their darn attacks. I think it's AI, alternative AI. Maybe. I'm not sure. Let's just have the orcs take care of them. Or I'm not, never mind. There are even more of the beasts. I will stop that beast. Yeah. There we go. There we go. We are level six now. Excellent. Now what were they guarding? Or what were they where were they around? We got a armor weed. We got bedrolls. And we got nothing else. That's it. So let's go back to Reddick, which is just right over here. And this um, game world feels much smaller than what I remembered. Or back when I played this. Like the distance between Reddick and Ardea and Cape Dunn felt much larger back then, but that was back then, so. I mean, it was like that with Ultima 7, I guess. Okay, who... It's Brenton, right? He wanted the boars killed. The aggressive wild boars are dead. You can go back to work. <laughs> Finally, one of you who worries about our problems. Thanks, warrior. Here is my gold. Nice. 30 gold. And those boars are very dangerous to the point where I wish we got uh, more money... So we gotta eliminate the orc patrol on the farm. And the roaming orc patrol between Reddick and Ardea. And get weapons weapons for the rebels. Hmm. Alright, so just going through my inventory real real quick here. And also just still debating on what to spend my skill points on. We got a lot of learning points, excuse me. We got sixty of them. I think we'll go travel back to Cape Dunn. It's raining. That's wonderful. At least the rain looks better than in Gothic 2. Let's travel to Cape Dunn. That's where we're going to end this playthrough, I believe. Got about two minutes left. Also got a Flame Berry here. We'll grab that. Morning Dew. Healing Plant. We'll grab that. And once again, I'm just marveling at how smooth this game is. I just... Like I said, I remember it being so stuttery back then. Even on an okay computer that it was just... I remember our deal was like really, really laggy back then. Very, very stuttery. Just very unpleasant to play. Not very, it was noticeably... Uh, noticeable with the frame drops. I'm trying to avoid creatures for now. I don't want to fight them. Let's get save here and we'll... Uh, Hang on next to this guy. His name is Jen. So we're going to go ahead and save right here. Save one. And we'll go ahead and save and save two. And when we come back, we're going to go ahead and talk to Jens and explore Cape Dunn. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. And I will see you then. Goodbye.